Today, we're gonna to go over some of the top careers that you can go into after getting a computer science degree. This was a highly requested video, and it's gonna give you a good idea of the different jobs, careers, specialties, subspecialties, and verticals that you should look into if you're getting this degree. And we're gonna go over some of the most important details of these different careers, like what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, how much they get paid, and what the job outlook is gonna be like for the next 10 years. So if this is the type of video you want me to make more of, let me know by gently tapping that like button and commenting down below any thoughts, comments, etc. that you have on the video. And if you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on a video in the future. All right, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is a computer science related career in healthware. So basically a software developer that works specifically in healthcare. So you could be working as a systems analyst or a software developer or a healthcare informatics analyst. And there's a lot of other specialized roles where you can use your data analytics skills. And healthcare is special because there there is a lot of extremely sensitive information that absolutely cannot be leaked under any circumstances, but at the same time, it needs to be readily accessible to healthcare professionals so that they can make good decisions when they are treating or curing a patient. So as you can imagine, this is really difficult to do. It's almost like trying to have your cake and eat it too. But generally speaking, software developers make around $116,000 a year, and this is what you would probably expect to make in healthcare. And by the way, if you're wondering what career you want to pick, which is probably the biggest question and the biggest problem uh, that I get from viewers on this channel, check out my six step guide down below. It's the six steps to choosing your dream career. This is basically my entire philosophy on choosing your career boiled down into six easy steps. You can check it out down in the description below. Uh, you'll get it completely free. And additionally, you will also get access to a newsletter where I share other exclusive content. Number two on the list is one that I mentioned with number one, but I think I wanted to expand on it because it's slightly different. And that is going to be a healthcare informatics analyst. This is basically someone who helps to design the systems where you record, organize, store, secure, and access data. Now there are a lot of different subspecialties within this because there are subspecialties within healthcare. So for instance, you have nursing informatics analysts, you have clinical informatics analysts, and you have health informatics analysts. Now this does tend to be a little bit more on the data science side of things rather than the software development side. But with this career, you can expect to make around $107,000 a year. Next one on the list I'm gonna be talking about is government-related computer science careers. So there is a ton of opportunity available for those who want to work in the government. And one thing you could do is become a FBI computer scientist. And the FBI actively recruits computer scientists and they even have a program that they post on their website. And I'll have that pop up on the screen. Now, government jobs have a reputation for having incredibly good benefits. And they also have a reputation for being relatively easy compared to jobs in the private sector. Sector. Not always true, but generally speaking, that does tend to be the case. And computer scientists in general can expect to make around $119,000 per year. Number four on the list is going to be a cybersecurity analyst. And this one has a ton of demand. Uh, it's kind of a combination of computer science and IT, but it sounds like exactly what it is. You're basically protecting against internet related threats. And this is a super, super hot skill set because there's been many scandals out there where companies have gotten broken into and data has been stolen. And because of this, the companies have had massive lawsuits and they've also lost a ton of profit. Now, as a cybersecurity analyst, you can expect to make about $97,000 per year. Next one on the list is going to be a data scientist. Now, a data scientist is responsible for collecting, analyzing, interpreting, and communicating results that they find from extremely large amounts of data. Now, so far, all the ones that I've mentioned on this list, typically you can get into with a bachelor's degree, sometimes even less than that. With data scientists, it's actually typical for them to have a master's degree, and then sometimes you can get into it with just a bachelor's. But data scientists can expect to make about $121,000 per year. Now, in the next few that I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna be diving into some different specialties. And the truth is, software development as a profession is still incredibly young. Software developers, software engineers have not been around all that long. And you see in other professions that are much more matured, like lawyer or doctor, specialties tend to emerge. And some specialties end up getting paid much more than others. And usually specialists tend to do much better than generalists. For instance, somebody who is a brain surgeon, which is a specialty, is going to make a lot more money than just your ordinary family doctor. And anesthesiologists, for instance, get paid more, they work less, they have much better work-life balance, and they have a lot more options and flexibility than a general practitioner. And as computer science, as software development, software 
software engineering matures, I think this is going to happen as well with different specialties. And one of the specialties I'm really excited about is going to be DevOps engineering. Now, this is another one where it's a little bit of a combination of software development as well as information technology. And basically what DevOps engineers do, the value that they provide to a company is they get products to market faster. So usually what happens when you have a new product, let's say you're launching a new phone, for instance, like you work for Apple and you're launching a new phone. Usually what happens is you have the beta of the phone and then you have to test it for a long time in order to get the bugs out. And you'll have you know, the people who actually make the phone itself and then you'll have the people who actually test the phone out. DevOps engineers are familiar with the software side of things, but they're also familiar with the information technology side. So they're able to test these things and in many cases, they might save the company all the way from a couple days to maybe a couple weeks. And in the business world, if you're able to launch a product a couple weeks faster, that can equate to millions, maybe even tens of millions of extra dollars in profit. So DevOps engineer is another really good one. Uh, not a huge amount of data out there about how much they actually make, but it's probably going to be above average when it comes to software developers. So I'm guessing somewhere between 115 to 125,000 on average. Another really good one is cloud engineering, cloud computing, and I think a lot of people refer to this as infrastructure and cloud. So there is a lot of different jobs that fall under this category, but basically companies are more and more storing things in the cloud. It's just extremely convenient to be able to store something in a place where anyone can access it, anyone who's supposed to access it can access it easily. I know that I used to store all of my data on hard drives and now I store almost everything in the cloud. So it's just super easy, super convenient, not only for individuals, but also for organizations organizations and companies. Now, this is a specialty where the software developers and software engineers do tend to be a bit more experienced. And this is one that I kind of see as a dark horse candidate. It's pretty good right now, but it could be even better in the future. And if you work in infrastructure and cloud, you can expect to make around $116,000 a year. Next one on the list is going to be a site reliability engineer. And they focus on reliability, scalability, and performance. And this is kind of a combination of operations manager and software developer. Because you're basically just making sure that the infrastructure of the software or technology is going to be able to scale as you build the company. And you're also making sure that it runs really well on a day-to-day -day basis. And site reliability engineers make about $108,000 a year. And this is one where you do see site reliability engineers making pretty good money, even though a lot of them don't have a lot of experience. And you can kind of see that it's an outlier in this graph right here. Next one on the list is going to be a machine learning and data science engineer. Now this is one of the smallest specialties and it's also likely one of the most in demand as well. So if you look at this supply and demand graph, you'll see that there is one huge outlier and that is the machine learning and data science engineers. They are in high demand and low supply. And if you look at this graph, you'll also see that they are a bit of an outlier as well. They tend to make pretty good money even though they don't have as many years of experience as some of the other specialties. Now it is kind of hard to say what the salary is here because it is kind of a rare specialty and there's a lot of subspecialties and a lot of nuance depending on the company you work with, etc. But you might be making like $169,000 a year if you go into this. And it doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. Number 10 on the list is going to be a network architect. Now with this one, you're typically going to be designing the computer networks within businesses. So a good way to imagine this is let's say you have different departments within a company. You've got sales, marketing, accounting, executives, etc. And each department has files and information that they need to share among themselves, but they don't necessarily want to share that information with the other departments. They also have different email, software, sometimes websites that need to be shared amongst themselves. And the way a network architect would design this is they would have a certain level of security for people who are communicating with each other within the same department and a different level of security for people who are communicating with each other in different departments. And I know this sounds really simple, but it's actually actually a lot more complicated than that because security is extremely important when it comes to data. Now, network architects make about $134,000 a year. So really, really good money. So hope this gave you some ideas. If you enjoyed this video, check my other videos out right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. Jab on the video and I will see you next time.